Hello everyone, welcome to Coven Carbs Coding Class. In this video, we are back with part two of the JavaScript HTML beginner series, and you will be creating the first iteration of your clicker game, which does not have to be generic, as mine is, in which you will click a button to get more generics. It's not much, but it's a start. Speaking of starts, let's get started. Okay, pop open your editor, which we picked in the last video. If you haven't seen it, you should probably go watch that one. And you see this nice hello world file? Well, it's not really much of a use to us. So scrap it, throw it in the garbage. and make a new file. I'm going to call it generic underscore clicker dot html. Great. So the first thing you're going to do is make a doc type tag, which you do by making a less than sign, then an exclamation mark, then typing doc type, then a space, then html, and then a greater than sign, just like we did at the beginning of the last video. Now, Instead of just going straight into like making a button and stuff, we're going to make a head tag. And this is where we keep all of the scripts and the metadata for our page. So type head and your editor might automatically close it. It should, if it doesn't, well, uh, it sucks to be you, get a different editor. And then inside of it, the first thing we're going to do is make a title tag. So title, which is, again, a less than sign, the word title, and then a greater than sign. And then to close it, which you do want to do, it is the same thing, a less than sign, a slash, and then the word title, then a greater than sign. OK, enough with that. Now inside type whatever you want the name of your page to be. I'm going to call it generic clicker. Great, generic clicker. Now, we're going to leave everything else in this head tag blank. We're going to be filling it up with more stuff in a little bit, but now we will make a body tag. The body tag is where you keep most of your HTML. This is where like the meat of your web page is, you know, all the text and buttons and you know all the stuff everything that is in your page that you see tends to be inside the body tag okay now we're going to make an h1 tag we did this in the last video so h1 and then inside of it let's just type you have zero generics great you have zero generics now we are going to be editing the content of this tag with a script so we are going to want to give it an id and an id is controlled by this thing called an attribute any html tag can have an attribute that attribute can be for example the id attribute which gives it a unique identifier which CSS and JavaScript can both access. You add it by typing ID equals, then opening quotes, and putting whatever your ID is. So I'm going to call it generics. And there are many other attributes that you can change. This is just one of them. Next, we're going to make a button tag. And the button tag is pretty self-explanatory. It's a button. So type button. And this button is going to have the on click attribute, which is on click, one word, equals, and then in quotes, we're going to put something. But we'll worry about what goes in those quotes in a little bit. And then inside of the tag, we'll just type get one generic, which will buy us one generic. Cool. Amazing. This web page won't do anything right now. If you want, I can open it for you just so you can see. There it is. 
you have zero generics, and we can click the button, but it doesn't do anything. So let's make the button do something. Now, lucky for you, we have this wonderful tool called JavaScript, which we can use by opening a script tag. So you open that script tag, and now you can actually do things. So the first thing we're going to do is create a variable. A variable is like a little thing where we can store data. So in this case, we're going to be storing the number of generics so that we can add one to it and then display it and be like, oh, how many generics do we have? Well, we have this many generics. So to declare a variable, and that's what it's called when you make a new one, it's called declaring. You type var, then space, then the name of the variable. I'm going to call it generics. Then equals sign, and then whatever you want to be stored in that variable. So in our case, it's just zero because you have zero generics. So you type a big fat zero, and then you type a semicolon. The semicolon tells JavaScript that it is the end of the line. If you don't add the semicolon, then the web browser will try and guess where you meant to put the semicolons. And normally it's fine, but it's a good habit to put the semicolon where you want it to be because it can cause issues when you're doing complicated things. Great. Now, let's make a function. A function is like a piece of code that we can run multiple times without having to type it over and over and over because that would be dumb. Okay. So we simply have to type function, then the name of the function, which I'm going to call it generic underscore clicked, and then open parentheses and close them. My editor automatically closed the parentheses. Now we're going to open the brackets, which are right next to the P key on your standard American keyboard. If you're not in the US, that varies, but they look like that, and the editor automatically closes those too. If your editor doesn't, then you should close them, and inside of them, you'll put whatever code you want the function to run. Ours is very simple. So, the first thing we're going to do is type generics plus plus. And what this does is it adds one to generics. So, what you could also type is generics equals generics plus one and that would do the exact same thing and then to make it one step simpler you can simply do generics plus sign equals sign one and this is what you usually do for adding to variables but if you just want to add one to generics then it's even simpler just generics plus plus semicolon now we need to update this text here because now you have one generic if you clicked on it if you ran that function now you would have one generic not zero so document this is what we use for editing the HTML this is important dot query selector query and then selector with a capital S and then you open parentheses and this is where you give the query selector inside of here what you want to get. So then you would open quotation marks and you can type hashtag, which means ID. If you want to get class, then you would do dot, and there's a few others. You want to do hashtag generics, and that means give me that element that's called generics. And then you want to do dot inner HTML with a capital H T M N L. My editor just gives it to me. And this will let you put things inside the HTML of generics. It'll replace this text with whatever you put here. So then you can type an equal sign and then in quotation marks the new HTML. So you can do you have and then now you're like wait I want to tell them how many generics they have. And I can't just be like, well, you have now you have one generic, but what if they have two generics? Well, quite simple. Outside of the quotes, you can put a plus sign, and then you do generics, 
and it adds generics onto the end of that. You have plus generics. And then you can add another plus sign and inside of quotes again, which my editor automatically closes, generics. And now you will get you have however many generics you have, generics. Great, but the button still won't do anything. Remember how we put this on click thing here? Well, you can put a function in that and it will run that function. So obviously we're going to type generic underscore clicked and then open parentheses and close parentheses. Now you can pass a value like we did here, but this function doesn't ask for anything. We would be putting it in here. So just leave it like that. Now go back to the browser and if you're using the live server extension, it should automatically reload. But if it doesn't reload, and now when we click the button, we get one more generic every single time. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Buy my merch and stay tuned next week for the third episode of this series. Yeah, the third episode of this series where you will be, you will be giving yourself the ability to automatically get a few generics every second. And you won't have a button for this quite yet, but you will be able to do this. One generic every second. In the meantime, stay safe and practice coding.